Today is a, is a, uh, a very interesting message because it's about the revealed things and about the things of our lives that God has revealed to us and that God has shown us both in the natural and the spiritual and how the natural and the spiritual work and how the spiritual always trumps the natural. It will always override and overcome the natural if you understand what are the revealed things and what are the things that the enemy is using to try to counterfeit and be counterproductive to where God wants you to go. Now, I, I left this message untitled for the longest time because I knew there was something that I was missing. And when mom called me this morning, we had prayer every Sunday morning. She gave me a scripture, and that was the scripture that I was missing. So I titled this message. Originally, it was called, I was going to call it the common thing, but I knew that wasn't what I needed to be preaching on. And so when I got the scripture for today, I got the, the title for today, because there are two things that are revealed. There is the natural man that is revealed, and there is the spiritual man that is revealed. And we're going to speak about both of those today and how they interact. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to two openings, Deuteronomy 29, 29, and 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. And stand in honor of the reading of God's Word. <laughs> Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children, that we may do all the words of the law. And then 1 Corinthians 10, 13 said, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man, but God is faithful and will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Now you hear Father, thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the Word of God that He breathed. Father, I pray today that you would open our eyes that we could see and our ears that we could hear and our heart that we can understand what the Word of God has to say to us concerning the revealed things, both in the natural and in the spiritual. And I pray, God, that as we hear the Word of God today, that we might be able to see how the Word of God applied to our heart changes us and how the Word of God applied to our heart transforms us and conforms us to be more like Christ. Now, Father, minister and speak to your people today. God, these are your people. They have come to your house to hear from you. Now, Father, I submit myself to you so that you can speak to them through command of the Holy Spirit. And we'll be blessed in doing so in Jesus' name. We thank you. Amen and amen. Now, the revealed thing. The Amplified version, version, Amplified Classic version of 1 Corinthians 10, 13 said, for, there, for no temptation, no trial regarded as enticing to sin, no matter how it comes or where it leads, has overtaken you and laid hold on you that is not common to man. That is no temptation or trial has come to you that is beyond human resistance and that is not adjusted and adapted and belonging to human experience and such as man can bear. But God is faithful to His Word and His compassionate nature. And He can be trusted not to let you be tempted and tried and saved beyond your ability and strength of resistance and power to endure. But with the temptation, He will always also provide the way out, the means of escape to a landing place, and you may be capable and strong and powerful to bear up under it patiently. Now, that makes it sound like, if you will, that there has not been anything yet revealed that is going to get you through the troubles of life. That makes it sound like that God <coughs> is revealing as you go and flying the plane, if you will, as He built it. That's how we do a public education. We fly the plane as we build it. That's why it's in such a mess. God did not create His plan so that His plan needed to be built while He was doing it. 
He created his plan concerning how he would deal with man before the ages ever were. And now man has the ability to understand that God has revealed, let's go back a page, has revealed, and the revealed things belong to us. All of the things that God has already shown in His Word, by His will, through the breathing and the inerrant writing of the Word of Holy Scriptures, and through the revelation of the Holy Spirit, has been given to you to profit with all. Has been given to you so that you could understand who the tempter is, what the tempter's trying to do, how the tempter is trying to attack you, what the tempter is trying to do to destroy your soul, and then so that you can understand that the cross has been revealed to you and the methodology for you to be in the path of escape has already been provided for you and there is therefore, there is now no temptation that can take you but such as is common to the natural man. Well, let's look into it. These common things which are revealed. The cross belongs to you, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus Christ belongs to you. God has set him at his right hand as the representative of mankind. You are in him. He belongs to you. Those, the, the common and the, uh, now watch this now, this is a big point. The common and the uncommon things belong to man. All of the things that are common and uncommon belong to man. The things concerning the natural man, they belong to you. Because of the fall, you were caught in the pattern that Adam created by disobedience. The things concerning our spiritual man, if you believe on the name of the Son of God, they belong to you. The things that are weights and the things that are in your natural man, they are yours. Listen to what the Word of God said in Hebrews chapter 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. Where is that cloud of witness? What is that cloud of witness? That cloud of witness is not in the natural. It's in the spiritual realm. There is a cloud of witness that is in the spiritual man that is cheering you on so that you can lay off the natural man. Look at it. Let us lay aside every weight. And the sin which does so easily beset us, there's the natural man. So in that scripture, you see the spiritual man and you see the natural man. And he says if you will lay off the things of the natural man, you would be able to run with patience the race that is set before you. If you would lay off the common part of man that has been revealed, and put on the revealed part of man that is in the spiritual, then you can run your race with patience, you can run your race with assurity, you can run your weight race with certainty that what God has prepared and planned and revealed that is given to you through the eight works of the cross of Calvary, through the seating of Christ at the right hand of God, through the power and presence and provision of the Holy Spirit that live the revealed things of your spirit, man, that the Word of God said in Romans chapter 8 and verse 6 is the spirit of peace and life can live in you and you can be free from the dominion of the natural man because God has made a way for you to be free and not living under bondage. Yeah! Now look at this. The cloud of witness is the spiritual effect that cheers us to a deeper walk with God. You know when you're living in this life, ladies and gentlemen, you go through the constant struggle of the temptation to fall back into the old man. But your spiritual man is saying to you, don't go there, don't do that, don't think like that. There's a weight that is accompanying it that is pulling you gravitationally back to the old nature. But thank God, in the believer, there is a spiritual weight 
that is pulling us, and it's not pulling us down, but it is pulling us vertically towards heaven where Christ sits on the right hand of God and mediates and advocates and intercedes so that you can gravitate towards the glorious things and set your affection on things that are heavenly in nature and not of this earth, not of the natural man, but of the spiritual man. God has revealed in you a spiritual man that is full of his presence and his power when you will turn the inner man and release him through the words of your mouth speaking in agreement with God's word that God has made you to be the dominant overcomer over your natural man through your spiritual man. Now all of the cloud of witnesses, all of them got there the same way. Every one of them got there the same way. They got there by walking by faith in the Word of God and in the thing that God had revealed to them. Let's go back and look at Noah. What God revealed to Noah, God counted in His righteousness and saved His whole family. He walked by faith and not by sight. Let's look at Abraham. What God revealed to Abraham, Abraham walked by faith and not by sight. And God, through Abraham, saved an entire nation of people. Let's go back and look at David. David who walked in faith even though he was flawed by his nature. God, because of his belief and his walk and his ability to love God and put God first, called him a man after his own heart because of his faith, because of what he believed. Look at the prophets. They didn't get the full picture, but what they saw, they believed. I'm asking you today, what has God revealed in His Word that you have taken to be your very own and said, that revealed to me has changed my inner spirit, changed my heart, and I am living after what God has revealed to me. Amen. Think about that. Well, here we go. They show us that we should walk in Christ, that we can live victoriously. The weight of our natural man that is revealed in us, watch this now, has to be put aside. Sin has to be set aside. I'm going to show you why. The common part of man, which is carnal, must be laid off when you take into effect and into full view the price that Jesus paid. Do you know that living as a person who says they are a Christian and doing things that are natural man by nature, walking in sin, in sickness, in disease, in fear, in doubt, and in unbelief are things that bring a reproach to the Word of God. Walking in sin while professing to be a Christian brings a reproach to the Word of God. I have friends that call themselves Christians, but yet their mouth says something totally other. Their behavior says something totally other. Their actions say something totally other. And, and as I watched them live, I watched the influence that that has on other people. And they gravitate to that. And they think, oh, if this is what a Christian is, anybody can be a Christian. All I have to say is, who I am? Well, I'm a Christian. But my behavior and my actions and my words and my deeds do not measure up to the price that Christ paid a Calvary. And when my actions, my words, and my deeds don't measure the price that Christ paid, the blood that He shed, the body that was ravaged, the death that He died, my friend, then we become a reproach in the face of God as God looked at Jesus when He hung on the cross and turned from Him because what He saw was more than he could bear. How could he look at us and say our lives, 
that resembles so closely to the world can ever be anything more than a reproach with the cost that was paid to name the name of Jesus as Lord and King of my life. Ah! But yet we want to live with one foot in the world. We want to think with one foot in the world. The common part of man. The Bible says there is, there, there, is, there is no temptation, but such as is common to man. Well, what are the common things of man? There is nothing in the natural arena that can tempt you that's not a common thing. If you are tempted with sin, you are being tempted with the common thing. If you're being tempted with sickness and disease, you're being tempted with the common thing. This week I begin to feel sense in my body that my body was beginning to come down with something. I called mom. I said, I'm not coming over. I'm going home and I'm going to prayer. And I went home and I went down to prayer and the Lord showed me something about 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There is no temptation. And as I prayed on that scripture, it dawned on me that the common things of man are all contrary to Isaiah 53, 5. The common things of man, sickness, disease, heartache, brokenheartedness, depravity, poverty, prison, being locked in a mental, emotional prison, are all contrary to Isaiah 53, 5. Any symptom in my body is contrary to Isaiah 53, 5. Anything that is common to the fall of man, common to the fall of man with respect to sin and what sin brought into the world, sin brought depravity. Why do we know that? Because Jesus said in Luke 4 and 18 that he was anointed to preach the gospel of good news to the poor, to the brokenhearted, to the captive, to them that are bruised, to them that lack liberty, and to those that are in prison, and that what he preached would bring an acceptable year of the Lord. It would bring a time when your body, your soul, your mind, your finances, your home, your children would fall under an acceptable time in the presence and power and provision of God. Let me tell you something, my friend. This thing that God has revealed to us is perfect in every way. His name is Jesus Christ. He has been revealed as the Son of Almighty God, the complete Son of God, that Paul said you were the fullness of Him, and He is the fullness of the God. You have been revealed to know that there is no temptation that is anything more the devil. You are free from that bondage. You are free from that recklessness. You're free from that life. You're free from that world. You have been translated out of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Glory be to God. Common things. Now listen to this. Romans 8 and 7 said, because the carnal mind is at war with God. The common things, now watch this now. Get me close here. The carnal things are at war with God. When you operate in the carnal thing, you are absolutely boxing with God. You are standing in the arena, jabbing with an almighty God, and saying, no, I don't accept what Jesus did for me. No, I don't choose to live like that right this minute. I am now at war with you, God. You are fighting a God because you have a you are against Him with your actions. You are against Him with your behavior, and you are fighting the prophecy of Isaiah fifty-three and five. You are fighting the prophecy that He was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquity. The chastisement of your peace was upon him, and by his stripes you are healed. Every uncommon thing known to man, sin, sickness, disease, doubt, fear, and unbelief, are all covered 
in one verse by one prophet, the man Isaiah, that told us about a Jesus that would die so that your sin, sickness, disease, fear, doubt, and unbelief could all be covered by the blood, could all be set in the body, could all be seated at the right hand of God. Once and for all and forever. Yeah, you just want to give the Lord a hand of praise. I don't want to be at war with God. Do you want to be at war with God? When we look around at our, at our world, however, we see a world at war. We see a world that's in denial. We see a world that keeps telling us there's a better way than God and keeps doing the worst thing than God. We see a world that tells us we can meditate our way to peace. And all we see is a world that is doing hellish, damnable things day after day after day after day. Meditation ain't getting it done. The purpose-driven life ain't getting it done. 21 days of prayer and fasting ain't getting it done. Because we are at war with God with doctrines that are outside the gospel that Jesus Christ came to declare and command. I have come to declare to you that if you're poor, you don't have to be poor anymore. If you're wounded, you don't have to be wounded anymore. If you're distressed, you don't have to be distressed. If you're broken, you don't have to be broken. If you're bruised, you don't have to be bruised. If you're captive, you don't have to be captive. You can be free from the bondage of sin. It's been revealed at the cross over 2,000 years ago. What Jesus answered to the common thing of the devil was. He died and said, I, if I and worship Him and love Him and lay down the weight of sin. Stop being at war with God. The carnal mind is not subject to the law of God. Carnal thoughts are always on death. The carnal mind wars against the laws of God. Are you warning against the law of God? Are you making up in your mind what your own religion is? Are you at war with the Word? Are you at war with His love? Are you boxing with God over who loves who? Are you boxing with God over whether God loves me, whether God cares about me, whether God's thinking about me, whether God knows me? Let me tell you something, my friend. The Word of God said that He would reveal to His people His very covenant. And that covenant would be a covenant bonded by the love of God because God is love. No one loves you like God loves you. No one went to the cross for you as Christ did. No one died for you. The flesh will never live as Christ lived. The flesh will never accomplish the thing that Christ accomplished. And no man living will ever, ever, be a sacrifice for sin like Jesus was because man is stuck in common things that lead him to death. The only life that you can ever know and have, the only peace that you will ever know and have is the peace that comes from walking in the Spirit and accepting Jesus Christ as Lord of Lords and King of Kings and living according to that day by day by day, moment by moment by moment, stop boxing with God. No need for it. James 1 and 6 said, but let him ask in faith. Now watch this now because I want you to get this. The old man was steeped in doubt and unbelief. Your old man, your old nature was steeped in doubt and unbelief. If it weren't so, the Word would not have addressed it on so many occasions. I want to ask you today, when are you going to stop living in doubt and unbelief? When are you going to stop walking in doubt and unbelief? When are you going to stop looking at life and measuring it on the measuring stick of what I think it ought to be? How I think it ought to go? I think it ought to be this way. When are you going to start living the life of what is revealed to you? Not by what I think, not by what I want, not by how I feel like it, not by my opinion, 
But by what's been revealed, well, preacher, what's been revealed? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him would not perish, should not perish, but would have ever win, win, win. When you begin to walk according to the revealed plan of God that said, Come unto me, all ye the labor of heaven, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly. Glory to God, the King of kings and Lord of lords is revealing to you His love, His kindness, His care, regardless of what any man does, regardless of what any woman does, regardless of what the common thing man might do. You look at the 17 works of the flesh and they spew out of men. Adultery, fornication, stealing, lying, murders, ending, strife, spews out of man. But we don't see that in the revealed will of God. No, what we see is a life that says, in my spirit you will have peace. I don't see the murderer in peace. I don't see the prisoner in peace. But I see the child of God living in the life of peace and in the life of joy because Jesus promised you both of them in John 14, 15, and 16. He promised the revelation of peace into your heart, peace into your life, peace into your home, peace into your work, peace into every step you took. For no matter what happens to you, He's the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings over it all. Amen. Glory to God. Do you know that when Jesus taught the disciples about prayer that moves mountains, in Mark 11, 23, He said, if you believe in your heart, doubt not. Doubt and unbelief, ladies and gentlemen. Doubt and unbelief will lead you into the life of common things. The only way to get out of the life of common things is to have a belief in an uncommon thing. See, the cross was not an uncommon thing because two other men died at the same time Jesus did. The cross was not an uncommon thing. That was Roman punishment. But what happened during the cross, after the cross, and because of the cross, ah, that's uncommon. That's uncommon. What Christ did coming off the cross, dying and laying in a tomb and raising from the dead, that's uncommon. That's the plan of God that He wants you to trust. The uncommon thing that God did for man. In the Old Testament, everything God did was external. Everything God did was external. They killed a lamb. They killed a ram. They killed a turtle dove. They killed a pigeon. They killed something external and poured the blood over the altar. An external sacrifice. But in the New Testament, by the New Covenant, there came an internal one man for all the world for one time who would die and who would come and live in you eternally as the ultimate only sacrifice built on a better promise, a revealed better way that God has prepared and said to you, if you will but believe in what I have revealed, I will raise you, resurrect you, make you accessible, make you acceptable in the very throne room of God. Matthew 21. The ingredient that Jesus produced concerning the fig tree. He said to them, if you want that, then you'll be able to do the same thing. John 20. The blessing to God's people. Thomas doubted. And Jesus said to them, listen, that's common. That's a common doubting and unbelief is common. It's common for you not to believe. It's common for every man who's stuck in the curse not to believe. First Timothy 2.8 said that if you want to pray, and you want to have successful prayer, and you want to get your prayers revealed and answers manifest to you, then cut out the doubt. Cut out the common thing. Cut out the well I don't know if. Cut out the I pray but. Cut out the well it, it hasn't happened yet. I prayed for a woman not long ago that God, in another city that God had shown me in the night, 
exactly what was wrong with her. I went to the church and prayed for the woman, laid hands on her, the Holy Spirit touched her, I knew she did, he did, and I said to her, she had a, a heart problem, and I said to her, the Lord had shown me exactly what it was, and I said to her, ma'am, what is, what, what is your problem? And she went down her chest like this right here, so I knew I was right on track. track. And I said to her, ma'am, I'm going to lay hands on you and God's going to heal you. That Sunday night, she came back to church and these were the words she said to me. Well, I don't feel any different. Well, I don't feel better. Glory to God, it's not about how you feel. It's about what God has revealed. God has revealed in Isaiah 53, 5 that by His stripes you're healed. It doesn't matter what you think about it. It doesn't matter what the circumstances. I laid down in bed the other night as I was telling you and my body was hot. I was beginning to have a headache. My body was rebelling against me and I said there is no symptom that has taken me but such as is common to man. These symptoms are common to every man who's under the curse. But glory to God, I don't live under the curse. I live under the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I live under the power and presence of the Holy Ghost. There has no temptation. And then the second part of the verse came to me. And said, but he has made a way of escape. Glory to God. He has made a way of escape. And my eyes turned to the cross. And when I saw the cross and the blood that was shed there. And the body that was broken there for me. Glory to God. Through my body is the blood of an almighty king that died for me and that gave himself so my body could be well that no temptation, no problem, no symptom of the devil could ever come against so my expression because God made a way of escape for me. Glory to God. And here I was. Hallelujah. And here I will be. Because it's been revealed to me that my way of escape is in what Jesus did for me. My way to live above the world is in what Christ did for me. My way to be more than an overcomer has been revealed to me. Now there are secrets according to Deuteronomy 29 29 that are hidden in God. But Isaiah 20, uh, Psalms 25, 11 says that the secrets of God, God gives to man because of His covenant. God's not playing hide and seek with you, my friend. God is sharing with us through the covenant word of God exactly what He has promised for us and given to us and revealed to us and the way of escape is outlined to us just like the little girl walking down the yellow brick road, glory to God. I got my red shoes on. I can click my heels, glory to God, and walk in the revealed presence and power of an almighty God and be healed from any temptation, any sickness, any disease, any doubt, any fear, any unbelief, because Jesus Christ is in me the hope of almighty and eternal glory. Common things no longer do anything. Common things are turned back by the Word of God. Common things are turned back by the Word of God. And all of a sudden, I begin to live in the uncommon. I begin to walk in the uncommon. I begin to talk in the uncommon. I begin to release what God has shown me in His Word. And man, and Paul, I, I release it out of my mouth. And I speak to it and say what it is. You are a lie from the devil. You are part of the curse. <laughs> that curse has been destroyed. That curse wasn't broken, ladies and gentlemen, because if it had been broken, it couldn't be fixed. It was destroyed by the blood, presence, and power of Almighty God in the person of Jesus Christ. And therefore, the revealed thing that is uncommon to me, 
the revealed thing of Christ that I can live in and I can walk in and I can release my faith out of my mouth until God does what His Word said He would do, the way His Word said He would do, how He promised. He is not a man that He can lie. He is faithful to what He said He would do. There is no temptation, no symptom, no sin, no sickness, no disease, no fear, no doubt, no unbelief that can ever trump Isaiah 53, 5. For He was wounded for my transgressions. Glory to God. Bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was upon Him. And by His strength I am healed. I am what He said I am. And what was revealed in me by the Word of God. Because God said so. Amen. That's all I need. Amen. Been revealed to me. Unbelief, reasoning, and doubt and familiarity. Those are the things that cause you to fall. Those are the common things that cause you to question. Those are the common things that make you sit back and scratch your head and say, I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't, I don't. It, it, it's not, it's, in my natural self is not understanding how this could be. Those familiar things, those things of your nature. Church, let me tell you, the Bible said we don't walk by nature. We walk by faith and not by what we see. We walk by faith and not by what we hear. We walk by faith and not by our opinion. We walk by the revealed plan of God that the people in glory have gathered around according to the cloud of witnesses according to Romans chapter 12. And says to you, put that down. Put that common thinking down. Put that common desire down. Put that common passion down. Put those common lusts down. Put those common needs down. They are a weight. And that weight besets you. But come unto me and live this life through the path and plan of escape. And that path and plan of escape when lived patiently will be a life of God's work in eternity to you right now. Mom said to me the other day, she said, why would we need healing in heaven? Why would we need God's blessing in heaven? Why would we need prosperity in heaven? Why would we need Him to move for us and manifest Himself to us in heaven? Church, we don't need Him to move there. We need Him to move here. We need Him to do what He has revealed that He would do here. Not only to us, but to our children. We need the revealed plan, purpose, and provision of God today. Eternity is going on for the believer right now when you understand that the revealed truth about the uncommon nature of the Son of God and the Father Himself, the revealed truth about who they are in the spirit world is yours to have, is yours to hold, is yours to walk in, is yours to live in, is yours to make and take as your own as you conform yourself to the image of Christ Jesus. There is no temptation that has taken you, but such as is common to man. And with that, God has already destroyed it, defeated it. All you have to do is look unto Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of your faith. The one who began it, the one who worked for it, the one who died for it, the one who raised for it, the one who sits at the right hand of God because of it. If you look to Him and let Him offer you, you will find out that nothing in the curse belongs to you. You are free from that bondage, and now you are the acceptable man of God, and this is your acceptable you. Amen. Glory to the Lord. Amen. Amen. And now that we have been closed eyes. God, I have preached to them, the Holy Spirit has. And I've told them the truth today about what God has revealed. God, I don't want any man, woman, boy, or girl to walk out of this place today and not be free and not know you and not be free from the attack of the devil against them. God, not be free 
from the things of their natural mind that come against them that are devilish, hellish, that are directed to their destruction. Whether it's sin, sickness, disease, fear, doubt, unbelief, whatever it may be, God, the common things, the common things of man. Now, God, we know that the works of the flesh are the offshoots of the common things. They're the delineation and there are the, 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 the numbering of the common things of man. But God, these people are not common. These people are not common people. These people are people that believe on the name of the Son of Almighty God. They are uncommon people. They are free people. They are delivered people. They are unbruised people. They are unbroken people. They are unpoor people. They are people that have been enlightened by the benefits of God through the uh, cross of Christ and the new covenant in Jesus Christ and the better promises of His glory. Now today, God, as they sit in that chair, I'm going to say to them in just a minute, Father, for them to stand up and drop off, drop off every way of sin that does so easily to set them. God, they don't have to jump up and down and scream and holler about the, the things, the common things that gets into them and makes them do natural things. They don't have to jump up and down. You know them, God. You see into them for your eyes go to and fro. They're everywhere. You know them better than they know themselves. So God, as they stand today, and as they say to you, I'm dropping this off. I'm dropping off whatever it is that is common in me. Because I no longer want to be a common man. I want to live in the revealed work of God and be uncommon. I want to live and work in the revealed work of God and be the guy that found the path, the escape route in Jesus Christ and I'm laying off whatever it may be. God, I, I don't know. It, it may be pornography. It may be foul language. It may be drinking. It may be smoking. It may be anger. I don't know what it is, God. But I do know that today, the weight of sin, the spiritual realm, the cloud of witnesses calling today and saying to God's people, if you will obey the Word of God preached, you can be as free and be made free and become the true righteousness of God in Christ Jesus because that's what I died for. Maybe you don't feel it. Maybe you're sick today. There is no symptom that has taken you. Now in just a minute, I'm going to ask you to stand. You don't have to identify to anybody why you're standing. But God in you will know. And the Holy Spirit will free you from the sin, from the wrong, from whatever it is that besets you. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, on the count of three, I'm going to ask them to stand and acknowledge what the Word of God has applied to their life today. And then as they acknowledge that within themselves to you, I'm going to ask them, God, to raise their hand and thank you for the freedom. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, the Holy Ghost has preached to them. Confirm your Word in them today. I speak to this body in the name of Jesus. And I say to you, body, 
in Jesus' name. I lay hands on this man, and in Jesus' name, his body must recover. His body must recover. His body must recover. Arthritic conditions, I speak to you today, and I call you to be healed. Come out of this man by the power of God. Heal his body and set him free in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you today. God, we thank you today. God, we thank you today. God, we honor you today. God, we give you praise today. Worship him just a minute. 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 minute. Father, we thank you today for the release of her faith to you today. We thank you, God. Minister to her friend. God, we stand in the gap today. Now, Lord, as you and she ministers to her friend, I call this body to respond to the word of God, the revealed fact of healing. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, we thank you today. Glory to God. 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 Father, as I lay hands on you today, I call complete freedom. Complete freedom. Provided by the cross 
and by the promises overseen by the resurrected King who sits forever at the right hand of God and is exalted and loves me. Thank God. Give the Lord a talking about what are the, the uh, how the common things affected things that Jesus was doing and how people who had Christ because of common things he said I'm not able to do much work with them but people that lived in the uncommon thing they started the church That goes on today, full of the power and presence of the Holy Ghost through the uncommon thing. See that? See you on Wednesday night. God bless this church and this body as we dismiss from this building in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. <laughs>